Hello there. In the last video, we introduced the Mittag-Leffler function and evaluated it at some particular values. So if you don't recall, the Mittag-Leffler function of two variables alpha beta of variable x is defined to be equal to the infinite series, the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity, of x to the power of k divided by gamma of alpha k plus beta, where the one parameter Mittag-Leffler function, uh, Mittag-Leffler of alpha of x, is defined to be equal to the Mittag-Leffler two-parameter values evaluated at alpha comma 1 of random variable x. Also in the last video, we explored some particular values and transformations of the Mittag-Leffler function. So last time, we explored, for example, Mittag-Leffler of 0, 1, and 2, so the one-variable versions of 0, 1, and 2 evaluated at x, and we also explored the integral from 0 to x of the Mittag-Leffler of 0, 1 and 2 of negative t squared dt. So in this particular video we're going to be focusing on the two parameter uh, representation of the Mittag-Leffler function and also briefly talk about uh, the derivatives of the Mittag-Leffler function as well. Alright, so let's start off with some uh, basic examples. So first example, let us figure out what function representation is Mittag-Leffler uh, 1, 2 of x. So this is the two-parameter version, uh, Mittag-Leffler alpha, beta of x. So if we just use this as the definition, this is just going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all divided by gamma of 1k plus 2. So as we already know, this is the same thing in terms of factorial since k is an integer and 2 is an integer as the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the k divided by k plus 1, the quantity factorial. It would be nice if we can have this factorial value and this power of x, uh, the same exact value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by multiplying top and bottom of this expression by x, where x is independent of the summation variable. So this is going to be equal to 1 divided by x multiplied by the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k plus 1 all divided by k plus 1 factorial. Right. So as we should already know, we can actually uh, shift this value by adding 1 and subtracting 1. So we can rewrite this as 1 over x times uh, negative 1 plus 1 plus the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the k plus 1 all divided by k plus 1, the quantity, factorial. Because if we substitute k for 0 into this expression, this starts off with uh, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 2. On the bottom we have 1 factorial, 2 factorial. So this term is actually the x to the 0 power over 0 factorial term. So we can actually express this as an infinite series that we should be familiar with. In particular, 1 over x times negative 1 plus the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all divided by k factorial. So this series we should definitely know from calculus 1. So that's just going to be equal to e to the power of x minus 1 all over x. So that is Mittag-Leffler. So Mittag-Leffler of 1, 2 of x. So that's neat. All right, so let's just do another basic example. So example 2. Let's figure out the, the elementary representation of, say, Mittag-Leffler to 2 of x. So if we use this, this is just going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all over gamma of 2k plus 2. So I'm going to begin by approaching this in the same exact manner as I did for the previous example. So this is just going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all over 2k plus 1 factorial. So to start, uh, so this is k and this is 2k. I would like to them both be 2k's. In particular, I want the top to be 2k plus 1, but we can easily fix that plus 1 in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent this as the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of the square root of x to the power of 2k all over 2k plus 1, the quantity factorial. And now I can multiply top and bottom of this expression by the square root of x, and that's going to increment the power of square root of, 2K, square root of x to the 2k to the power of 2k plus 1. So this is just going to be equal to 1 over the square root of x times the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of the square root of x to the power of 2k plus 1 all over 2k plus 1 factorial. So if we let u 
be equal to the square root of x, this is just precisely equal to 1 over u times the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of u to the 2k plus 1 all over 2k plus 1 factorial. So this is clearly an odd function, at least this power series is, and that power series should look familiar because that's the hyperbolic sine function. So this is the hyperbolic sine function of u all over u. So we can rewrite this. So mitoc left lower 2 of 2 of x is just going to be equal to the hyperbolic sine evaluated at the square root of x all over the square root of x. So you may just call this, for example, the hyperbolic sinc function evaluated at x. Right? Um, some people use this notation, some people don't. Uh, but this is sort of analogous to sine of u over u being equal to the sinc function of u by definition. But if you don't know that notation, it's okay. This is also an accepted representation. So I've been just choosing uh, integers here for the parameters of the metallic Leffler function, but that's of course not the case always. For example, we can choose them to be fractions or rational numbers if we want. For example, let us consider the metallic Leffler of 1 half comma 1 of x. So what's this going to be? So I've chosen the value of beta to be equal to 1, so this is equivalent to the one parameter metallic Leffler function evaluated at 1 half of x. So let's see what this is. So this is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all over gamma of 1 half k plus 1. So this is a little bit more interesting, right? So, uh, therefore, if we let, for example, Mittag Leffler of 1 half, let's replace x with ix, and you'll see why I want to do this in a moment. That's going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of i to the power of k, uh, times x to the power of k all over gamma k over 2 plus 1. Right? So this power series should look familiar. This is particularly the Fadiva function. Uh, so this is precisely equal to w of x. Right? And we know that since this is the power series representation for the Fadiva function of x, then this power series is precisely equal to the error function representation for Fadiva. Right? So therefore the Mittag Leffler of 1 half of ix is precisely going to be equal to e to the minus x squared times the complementary error function evaluated at minus ix. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with ix again. So that's going to give us that the mittag leffler function of i squared x is just going to be equal to, so ix, the quantity squared, is going to be negative x squared, and those two negatives are going to cancel to give us a plus sign. So I have e to the power of x squared, and then we have the complementary error function evaluated um, at negative i squared x, which is negative negative x, which is positive x. Right? So we have this expression, and i squared we know is going to be negative 1. Um, therefore, we have the Mittag leffler 1 half of positive value x, it's just going to be equal to e to the x squared times the complementary error function evaluated at negative x. So also, uh, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this x squared power, and later you might see why I want to do that, um, for just a cute little identity, but this is definitely um, a good representation for the mittag leffler function. Uh, but a nice core layer for this is going to be the mittag leffler of 1 half of the square root of x, that's just going to be equal to e to the power of x times the complementary error function of negative square root of x. Right? And we're going to use this identity a little bit later. So those are some you know, uh, representations uh, for the, for the mittag leffler at multiple uh, parameters and also fractional values for the one parameter mittag leffler function. So now let us take a look at the derivatives of some of these mittag leffler functions, and then we're going to discuss why we're sort of going through each of these examples. All right, so let's begin by looking at the derivative of the first mittag leffler function of x and see what this is. So we already know that the first mittag leffler function of x is actually equal to the exponential function e to the x, and we know that the classical first derivative of e to the x is going to be equal to e to the x. So that's, of course, just going to be equal to the mittag leffler 1 of x function, right? So we clearly see that the mittag leffler function of 1 satisfies the differential equation y prime is equal to y for some particular initial condition, right? 
uh, where that initial condition is, of course, y0 is equal to 1. So let us consider the second derivative of the mittag leffler function. Uh, but let's consider the mittag leffler function 2 evaluated at x squared. Right? So we already know that the second um, mittag leffler function actually is going to be equal to, um, let's see here. So let's assume actually we don't know. I think I derived this in the last video, but let's assume that we don't actually know this. So this is going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of 2k all over gamma 2k plus 1. Um, so x to the 2k all over 2k factorial, that's just the hyperbolic cosine function uh, evaluated at x. Right? So that's the second derivative of uh, hyperbolic cosine of x. So we know that the second derivative of hyperbolic cosine is precisely equal to hyperbolic cosine of x. Um, so what this precisely is, is the second mittag leffler function uh, evaluated x squared. Because remember, the second mittag leffler function of x is actually going to be the hyperbolic cosine of the square root of x. Right? So you can easily verify that with this approach if you wish. So let's look at the third derivative just out of curiosity. So let's look at the third classical derivative of mittag leffler 3 of x cubed. Now, let's see. I don't think I derived what mittag leffler 3 was, so let's just approach it as if we probably don't already know it. So this is going to be equal to the third derivative of, so let's figure out what that mittag leffler function is. So it's going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of 3k all over gamma 3k plus 1. And let's see here. What can we do? So what I want to do here is write this in terms of factorials. So this is going to be the third derivative of, so this is going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the 3k all over 3k factorial, which is going to be 3k times 3k minus 1 times 3k minus 2 times 3k minus 3, and so on. So why do I want to uh, do that? So n since I don't really know what this infinite series is, probably, uh, I'm just going to take the derivative uh, of this x term uh, three times. Uh, so once I do that, I'm going to have, so the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity. So differentiating that three times, we're going to have, that's the first constant down, that's the second constant down, that's the third constant down, and we're going to have x to the power of 3k minus 3. All right, so we have 3k, 3k minus 1, 3k minus 2, and then we have this 3k minus 3 factorial term there. And now you can probably see why I wanted to expand that. So clearly, uh, these three coefficient terms disappear, and we're just going to be left with the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of 3k minus 3 all over 3k minus 3 factorial. All right, so what do we have uh, here? So if we evaluate this factorial at k is equal to 0, so when k is equal to 0, this is going to give us a negative 3 factorial, right? Um, well, factorials don't really exist uh, outside of the positive integers, um, so we need to map this to its analytical extension that we've been using, uh, in particular uh, gamma of negative 2, right? So for our constants, we have that this is going to be 1 divided by gamma of negative 2. So we know that the gamma function is not defined on the negative integers, but we know that the reciprocal gamma function is actually analytic everywhere because we know that 1 over gamma 2 over 1 over gamma 1, negative 1, and 1 over gamma 0 is actually equal to 0. And that's actually a nice little exercise to prove if you're already familiar with the gamma function. So when k is equal to 0, this turns into 1 over gamma negative 2. When k is equal to 1, then we have uh, 0 factorial, and then all the others after that. Uh, including that one is not going to be an issue. So, 
um, what I want to do is just send that first term to zero. So this is going to be equal to zero, so I'm going to send that to zero. So this is actually going to turn into the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of x to the 3k minus 3 all over 3k minus 3 factorial, since that first term is equal to 0. And then I'm going to shift back into gamma function. So let's not lose track of where we are. So this is the mittag leffler function of 3 evaluated x cubed. So this is going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of x to the power of 3 raised to the power k minus 1 all over gamma 3k minus 2. So let's pour, uh, perform some shifting here for our indices. So we're going to be letting L be equal to k minus 1. So when k is equal to 1, that gives us L is equal to 0. And then when k is equal to 2, L is equal to 1. When k is equal to 3, L is equal to 2, and so on. And uh, let's change this uh, gamma parameter here. So that's going to be, so what is k? So k is going to be L plus 1, right? So that means 3k minus 2 is going to be equal to 3 times L plus 1 plus 1, which is going to be, let's see. Oh, that should be minus 2, by the way. Just check that before we make an error. So 3k minus 2 is going to be equal to 3L plus 3 minus 2, which is going to be 3L plus 1. Right? So that means... That means the third derivative of metagliflor 3 of x cubed is going to be the sum from l is equal to 0 to infinity of x cubed to the power, so k minus 1 is going to be l, all over gamma. And this interior, 3k minus 2, is going to be equal to 3l plus 1. So what is this? So I'm going to just let u be equal to x cubed so you can see this clearly. So this is going to be the sum from L is equal to 0 to infinity. L is just a dummy variable, remember. This is u to the power of L, all divided by gamma of 3L plus 1. So this is precisely a mittag leffler function. This is the mittag leffler 3 of u, where u is, of course, x cubed. Right? So we have this interesting property here. In particular, the property that we see here is the following, which I'll state as the theorem, because you actually can do mathematical induction to prove this, is that the nth derivative with respect to n of the mittag leffler of n of x to the power of n actually gives you the mittag leffler function of n of xn. And this is going to be true for all n in the natural numbers. Right? So this is true for all natural derivatives, d to the power of n. So we've also explored some properties of the antiderivatives of the mittag leffler function of x to the power of n, right? Which are, I guess you could think of them as negative order uh, derivatives. So is there a possible connection to the fractional order derivatives, right? Because that's the main part of the story. So what about the alpha derivative of the mittag leffler of alpha, x to the power of alpha? Is this equal to mittag leffler alpha of x to the power of alpha? So I'm going to leave this question with you for now, and we will revisit this question later. Anyway, this is just some introductions to mittag leffler functions and also how you can uh, possibly analyze fractional derivative and uh, different integral operators using the mittag leffler functions, just like we used exponential functions to analyze the differential operator back in Calculus 1. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.